in my daughter's face. <laughs> well, she'd Don't never seen me play it either until now. And then I went, <laughs> <laughs> got to keep playing. And she lost it. Reminded me actually of Veggie Tales. I just want to let you know that that is live on the internet right now. Oh, goodness. All the folks in the whole wide world that, that watch this stuff have just watched it. Amen. <laughs> Be famous, Maggie. Yay. Bloopers. What's that? (laughs) Bloopers. Bloopers. That's not a blooper. I have built my life on the solid rock far away from the sinking sand. And I cast my eyes to the home that waits on the banks of the promised land. There's a song of praise that is lifted there by the saints and the angel band. And I long to go and to join the choir on the banks of the promised land. Hallelujah, what a morning when I for the nail-scarred hand, and I'm led from grace to glory on the banks of the promised land. That's for my bluegrass buddies. Amen. Every grief and pain that has bound me here, Jesus knows and he understands. They'll be washed away as I cross that stream to the banks of the promised land. Hallelujah, what a morning when I reach for that nail stirred hand. Then I'm led from grace to glory on the banks of the promised land. Amen. Then I'll see the face of my Savior dear back and close by his sweet command. Oh, my burden's gone, and I'll rest at last on the banks of the promised land. Hallelujah, what a morning when I reach for that nail-scarred hand, and I'm led from grace to glory on the banks of the promised land. I'll be led from grace to glory on the banks of the promised land. Oh, who will come and go with me? I am bound for the promised land. Hallelujah, what a morning on the banks of the promised land. Amen. Something a little fun there, amen? Thank you, Maggie. Yay, she says I'm done. (laughs) Let me see this world, dear Lord, as though I were looking through your eyes a world of men who don't want you lord but a world for which you died let me kneel with you in the garden Blur my eyes with tears of agony. For if once I could see this world the way you see, I just know I'd serve you more faithfully. Let me see this world, dear Lord, through your eyes. 
when men mock your holy name, when they beat you and spat upon you, Lord, let me love them as you love them just the same. Let me kneel high above my petty problems and grief for men hell bound eternally. For if once I could see this world the way you see, I just know I'd serve you more faithfully. For if once I could see this world the way you see, I just know I'd serve you more faithfully. I'm one of these guys. I've got messages in my Bible. The Bible says that a preacher should always be ready to preach. Amen. And sometimes us preachers make ways to preach. Amen. Amen. Because we just think it's a good thing. I already have a red light. Is that supposed to turn green? Red light, red light. Okay. All right. Can, can you turn it back down again? There you go. Okay. <laughs> And so, hey, we like to preach, and, my, my, and, and, and so I need to be ready to preach. So in my Bible, I have several messages already stuffed in there. See them? Those are like shells in a bullet. A bullet shells in a gun. Shells in a bullet. Shells in a gun. I'll get there. But not only that, I, I'm up in technology. I'm way up on in technology. I've got my sermon outlines on my little tablet. And this little tablet here, just like uh, Bro Brother Patrick did this morning, amen, it's, it's all right there. And I've got about another 20 more right here. So, I mean, it's only 7.30. Anybody got any plans for the rest of the night? No? Amen. Go on, Brother Holesclaw. Amen. I don't have to see any youngins around, so nobody has to go to school tomorrow. Amen. Wow. Praise the Lord. Well, God's been good to the Holesclaw family, and praise the Lord. Thank you so much, church, uh, for taking... The Holtz Clause on as one of your missionaries. And uh, I want to give you something tonight that will help you, be a blessing to you, an encouragement to you uh, individually, but also as a church. You know, I, 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 when we travel and we go to different places, uh, one of our ministries that we do is one of help. How can I help the church? Well, tuning the piano is okay. Praise the Lord. I did learn how to do that, and that's wonderful. You know, tuning a piano, that, that can cost upwards to $150 in some places. It really can. And so to bring that to a church and say, hey, no problem, I'll take care of it. I'll fix the little problems for you. That, no problem. No, no charge, nothing. Just, just let me be a blessing. Sound systems, I learned how to do that through time, just doing it. And I went to a couple different schools for it. But it doesn't mean that I know everything. They're coming out with everything new. I, I was doing everything analog. I mean, everything knobs and buttons, amen? Now they're doing everything digital. So I have to relearn. Amen. Yes, you can teach this old dog some new tricks. But that is temporal too. Piano's temporal. It will go out of tune. It will go out of tune. Amen. By this time, in six months, it'll be out of tune again. When, a, when everything changes. Yeah, especially when you drop a, a tube of arthritis cream in it. Yeah. Yeah. Let alone all the pens and pencils and stickers and all that things. I found another pen. Hey, I even found a squirrel's nest in, in, in one in, in India. There was a squirrel's nest in one. A mouse nest in another one that was in a farm country. And uh, so you never know what's going to be inside there. You know, I haven't found any gold or rings or anything like that yet. But I'm still hunting. Amen. I'm still looking. But that's temporal. Setting the sound system's temporal. All these things, because they break. You know, and, and anything that I can preach to you and be a blessing to you, my prayer is that when I preach something to you, as any preacher preaches something to you from the Word of God, it'll be something that will catch your heart just so. Something that, that will catch your heart just so. And I, I, was, I was looking at something earlier about, um, 
a preacher that was preaching and how that, uh, that uh, God used a, another preacher uh, to preach on a certain topic. And that certain topic catch fire and catch hold of that individual. For that individual to then to give their life not only to Christ, but to ministry and to pastor. Missionaries, as we come in, we strive to give, get something, get, set, set something on your heart, set it on fire for missions and missionaries. And my friend, that's what, we, that's what our desire is. But most times, sad to say, most times it just gets out there and, well, that was a good message. Thank you very much, Brother Holtzclaw. Who was here last week? Uh, oh, that coleslaw guy. Uh, he was here last week. What did he preach on? I don't know, but he played a kazoo. <laughs> and he goes to taverns. Yeah, you go to <laughs> those two things. Amen. But no, I want to give you something that can help you. Yeah, the, what's the old saying? The old saying is, uh, you know, you can give a man a fish for a meal for a day. Teach him how to fish, he can have a meal for life. See? So I want to give you something for life. I want to give you something that will help you church. Help you right where you are. This is something that you can do. And it's out of the book of Acts. So if you turn to the book of Acts, I want to share with you just this little portion of the life. I've done a full study on the life of Barnabas. On the life of Barnabas. Pastor, I don't know if... It, I'm, I'm still... I'm still the, the jury is still out on me if, if Barnabas was actually the disciple. Barnabas. Something to think about. So he's mentioned later on as a, an apostle. And his name kind of goes along the lines of one of the apostles that was joined unto, but that's another study altogether. I don't, the jury's still out for that one, but I did a complete study. So this is message number two. The first message begins in Acts chapter number four. In Acts chapter number four, we find this passage of scripture about who Barnabas, as we see him, show up on the scene. Other verses may tell us otherwise, but here in Acts chapter four, we definitely see this. We see this. And, we, and the church was going, and a lot of people were being saved. The two massive revivals happened. Can you imagine? When Pentecost, we call them by name, but actually there were revivals and people got saved. Amen? People got saved. Hey, 3,000 got saved in the first one, and 5,000 got saved in the next one. People were being saved daily, such as should be saved, and baptized and added unto the church. That's 5,000 plus 3,000. That's 8,000 plus. Amen? Could be an upwards of 10,000, 20,000 people that are already just getting saved. But they had needs. All these, they, many of these folks had needs. And people were bringing offerings unto the church and, and laying them down at the apostles' feet for distribution among those that had need. But look at verse number 36 and 37. It says, And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Barnabas. Barnabas. He saw a need. He saw a need. He had land that was personal. He sold it. That's sacrificial. He brought the money. Amen. He brought the money to them. That's complete. And he laid it at the apostles' feet. That's in humility. So he gave. But that's Barnabas. It shows us who he is. Barnabas wasn't his real name. His real name is Joseph. But by the, the surname given unto him, Barnabas, which is being interpreted, the son of consolation. A consolation, consolation means a help. Consolation means an encourager. A consolation is like one that, that helps you to get through the bad times. I had heard about Patrick. He took his lovely bride to the fair. And there he was playing with that little ball game to throw the ball and knock over the milk jugs. He had the ball in his hand. Oh, this must have really happened because I'm making it up. But anyway. <laughs> but it probably did happen. Knowing Patrick. <laughs> but anyways, he grabs the ball. He gets up there, man. He's all ready to go. I'm going to take this down for my sweetheart. I'm going to show you right there, buddy. Right there. I've got laser accuracy with this thing, man. Just watch. Back up. Back up. I don't hurt anybody. Amen. Soon pop. He misses every one of them. I was just warming up. Yeah, that just happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's it. Takes it. Swoop pop. Misses a third time. 
Now everybody watch out. I was just getting getting wet. He's gonna think if I if I don't if I don't knock them down this time, I'm gonna look silly. So I'm just gonna throw it as hard as I can. If anything, I'm gonna scare them down. Amen. I'm gonna have the sonic boom as it's going by. Those pins blow them apart. So he gets wound up. Watch out. Here we go. Takes his coat off. I'm ready to go. And he throws at number three. Boom. And he misses him again. So what does the man do? He reaches over there and grabs this a million for a dollar toys. Amen. Get a million of them for a dollar toys. He grabs this little cutesy little doll. And you go, here, honey, this is for you. I want it for you. <laughs> not anybody can, not just anybody can miss the pins all three times. <laughs> it takes a professional to miss them all three times. But what is that little prize called? A consolation prize. It's a consolation prize. When I used to run, I loved running. And I used to swim down in Florida. And I would swim. And sometimes I didn't come in first or second or third. Usually they have just the top three. Everybody else got a consolation prize. Consolation winning. Nobody, nobody lost. <laughs> Everybody gets something. Amen. Well, I learned the hard way, too. Many times I didn't get nothing, but it sure was fun to run anyways and play. But a a comfort. And Barnabas was such a guy. Barnabas was just a regular guy that got involved in church. He saw a need. He tried to help meet that need, and God blessed, and God used him in many different ways. But I want to show you what happens next in the life of Barnabas. Barnabas gets active. Barnabas gets involved. Turn over to now to Acts chapter number 9. Acts chapter number 9. And I want to show you something tonight that's missing in our churches. I want to show you something tonight that's missing in the heart of every believer. I really, I really believe this. We have gotten to a place here in America that we just care about us for and no more. Amen. It's just us. Somebody walks in the back, we look at them as a complete stranger, and that's where they stay. You are a stranger, and I'm going to leave you alone. Praise the Lord. I know we had uh, some visitors this morning, and one lady visitor in the back, she got bombarded. Praise the Lord. I'm glad she got bombarded by, by five or six of you ladies. Man, just going, hey, I'm glad, glad to have you. Hey, to fill out the visitor's card. Hey, that's great. That's great. And that goes along this line. But I want to help you to take that to another step. I want to help you to take that to another level. You see, I want to give you at the very end of the message a comparison of when it's done, and when it's not done. And this is in the line of in-church discipleship. You see, Barnabas was a regular guy. He didn't have a full education. He didn't go to Bible college. He just got, I believe he might have just gotten saved not too long before here when he was giving, selling his land and helping out in the church. And so now he's doing the next thing. He's excited about the Lord. Are you excited about the Lord tonight? Say amen. amen. Are you excited about what God did in your heart and life? Say Amen. Are you excited you got a good church that you can come to? Say amen. amen. Aren't you glad pastor just had a birthday? Amen. 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 <laughs> Aren't you glad Brother Holtzclaw is here tonight with Maggie? Amen. amen. No, not me, just Maggie. Amen. So I want to share something now. Because of this, we're excited about our church. We're excited about what God's done for us. Amen. If not, my friend, you need to check up and have revival right now. If you don't, you might as well just go ahead and hit the altar now. We really can't go much further unless you, you say, hey, I got my heart right with God. I've got everything settled. I got everything clear. What do I do next? This is what you do next. You go out and you bring them in. And that's what Barnabas was doing. Here in Acts chapter number 9, let's look over now in verse number 26. Basically all the first part of chapter number 9 deals with Saul getting saved. He sees the light. Amen. Another little bluegrass song. I saw the light. I saw the light. Okay. He gets saved, but he, we, we know who Saul was before. Saul was one that was committing people to prison. He was carrying them off to be, be, be put to death, to be martyred for their faith. He was seeing them uh, as they saw Philip. The, the, being stoned to death, he held, and, and it's not Philip, Stephen being stoned to death, holding on the cloaks thereof, while the men, the Jewish men, stoned Stephen to death. He was there, he saw it all. And on the road to Damascus, he saw the light and he got saved. 
And so now he's come back. But he's not the same. He found Jesus. But look to see what the response was from the church when he comes back. Verse number 26. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he assayed. I say, meaning he desired, he, he questioned, he, he, he had a heart burning to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. Did we pray yet? Good. No, we didn't. So let's pray because that's what we're going to talk about, about him being a disciple. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for tonight. Lord, help us have a, some joy tonight, but dear Lord, also to to accomplish much for you. We love you. We praise you. Lead us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And so Saul was come to Jerusalem. He desired to be, join himself with his, his disciples, but they, the disciples, were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. So what is that, Brother Holesclaw? Well, maybe you can picture somebody in your mind, a a undesirable, maybe somebody even from your past, un undesirable, someone that had been a crook and even to vandalize even things upon the church. Does that happen? It does happen. It does happen. Today, it happens. And you know this guy, and you, but no proof, but you set cameras up, but he's all done these kind of things, and you know that, that, that if this guy shows up, he's up to no good. He's up to no good. There was nobody any more of that line than Saul. Because he was always up to no good. And if that person walked in the door, a pastor may walk off off the platform, a Patrick may meet him back, some of the other men may meet him at the door and say, I'm sorry, sir, you are definitely not welcomed here. And there's a time for that. There's a time for that under church discipline. There's a time for that when you know it is a life-threatening danger. And that's what's happening here. Saul was a life-threatening danger to the church. At least, he was. But nobody wanted to do anything with him. But can I tell you something? That's, that's in an extreme case. But I wonder how many folks walk in the door in the back. They, we don't really know who they are. They're good people. We just haven't met them yet. And they come walking in, and we still treat them as if they are enemy, public enemy number one. That happens to us sometimes. That happens to us sometimes. And I'm the invited guest. My picture's in the bulletin. And I walk in. Not that bulletin. Not in your bulletin. Amen. Not in your bulletin. But I am on the back wall, okay? I'm on the back wall, just like in a post office, like in a post office. <laughs> something like that. Yeah. So they come in, and they, they get no special treatment. Nobody says hello. Nobody does anything with them, and they come in. They sit down. They walk back out, and that's happening in our churches. I pray that that never happens here. So I'm going to give you just a few steps of some things that you can do. Each and every one of you can. Each and every one of you can. And, and you can do so by starting with my first point. And it goes along like this. It's real simple, real simple. Back in that passage again. He says here, and when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he said to join himself with the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, believe not that he was a disciple, but Barnabas. We can stop right there. But someone who cares. But someone who has a heart of compassion. But someone that's an encourager. Someone that's a comforter. Someone that wants to, to, to see souls saved. Someone that wants to see their church grow. Someone that has that, that heart looking out for the church, but also looking out for the cause of Christ. And that ought to be each and every one of us. But Barnabas, and I pray that's you. But what did Barnabas do? But Barnabas, he says. But Barnabas took him. Let's stop right there. That's point number one. Barnabas took him. What does that mean, Brother Holtzclaw? That means he found him and claimed him. Dot, 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 my little outline, discipleship. Discipleship. 
You know, discipleship begins way before you have a Bible study with somebody. Discipleship begins way before you have a prayer time with somebody. Discipleship really begins way before that. You know how discipleship starts? Just like this. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm doing all right. Yeah, it's just started. That's how discipleship starts, with a simple, hi, Hello. how you doing? Good to see you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> it has just begun. It's begun with a simple, hi, or a simple, hello. Say hello with me, Ray. One, two, three, hello. Guys. Discipleship has started by someone saying, hello. And so what did Barnabas do? He took him. He claimed him. He, 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 he started this first step of discipleship, okay? So, so that's what it, I'm going to use Maggie, okay? Maggie is my daughter, so it's okay if I do this. I wouldn't normally go to a lady unless I had to. And even then, it would be just a handshake and, and a little bit of distance, just, just proper, amen? If it's a guy, I may get a little bit close, or let him know that, hey, glad you're here. Glad you're here. But I'm going to pretend I don't know Maggie. Maggie's just walked off the street. She's got some sharp utensils in her hand. <laughs> Nobody wants, she's knitting. She's got some knitting needles. Nobody wanted anything to do with Maggie. But a Barnabas. But a Barnabas. They're looking at her and say, oh, well, no, 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 I'm not talking to her. Boy, she looks like trouble. Capital T, right here in River City, my friend. And so, nobody, but, but a Barnabas walks in. And Barnabas comes out, comes out and goes, <laughs> the radar kicks in. We got a visitor. <laughs> I got to get my visitor's card, get my visitor's pack. <laughs> got to make sure that I'm A-OK. -okay. Amen. Got everything all set. Okay. <laughs> ah, hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm okay. So at this point, I am taking her. I am claiming her to get her in the beginning steps of discipleship. Now, how many of you think you can do that? I can do that. I can shake somebody's hand and say, hello. But to do more than say hello, Barnabas took means Barnabas said, at this moment, I'm going to go out of my way to, be, to get to know this one a little bit more. I've claimed this one. This one's mine for today. Maybe even more if the Lord opens that door of opportunity. Okay? You with me? But I want to stay with this one. I took this one and I claimed this one. That's pretty simple, is it not? How does it all start? It starts with a hello. Absolutely. Secondly, I want you to see, and Barnabas took him. He claimed him. He found him, discipleship. Then it says, and brought him to the apostles. He brought him. He took him and then brought him, meaning he befriended him and showed him. Dot, dot, dot. Fellowship. Fellowship. And so not only did I, did, did, is, does, a, does a Barnabas claim one to start with, but then to befriend him and to show him. What do you mean by that? He brought him. Well, he brought him to the disciples, the Bible says. Barnabas didn't know where the disciples were. And this young lady, she's new to the church. She's just walked in through the door. She came to the front and sat down. She feels comfortable. Maybe she likes music and things like that. And so she got comfortable in a comfortable area. Nobody's sitting with her, but I claimed her, and I said, hello, nice to meet you, glad to have you. My name is Tim, and yours? I'm Maggie. Hey, Maggie, glad you came today. What you make in there? That's so nice. A hat, wonderful, praise the Lord. Well, this is your first time here, right? Because it's been, or it was the first time in a long time, because I haven't seen you here in, long, in forever. I'm one of the church members here. And again, hey, do you, do you know how to get around our church? No. You know what most ladies are looking for, especially when they have children, when they come into a church? The nursery. The nursery that's one. What's number two? The bathroom. the bathroom. How do we know where both are? Without someone to give them a map. You follow the smell. Here's my statement. Here's my statement. Be that map. You be that kiosk. You be that welcoming committee. You be that one. So what does a Barnabas do? Not only does a Barnabas claim, can you put that down for me? I want to show you something. Do you, do you happen to know where the restroom is, Maggie? No. I, I do. Let me show you. Come with me. So I'm going to take her, and I'm going to show her. 
I'm going to show her around. So I'm going to show her. This is, this is the auditorium. Right through the doors, you see the, the men and the ladies is right next door to it. Oh, but, okay. that, but that doesn't mean anything. Okay, so just go in and lock, lock the door, lock yourself in, padlock it, and you're okay. And the nursery's over here. And, and to the right, there's a nursery if you had any children. To the left is pastor's office. Amen. And stay away from that. Amen. That's where the troublemakers go. And also, we have, uh, uh, the, the, you don't want to go downstairs to the basement either. Uh, but over to the other building is where we have food and refreshments. And isn't this wonderful? This is our church. We love our church. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, it is. Thank you so much for coming. So I'm getting to know her while I'm walking. Do you go much? Do you go to church much? Oh, every now and then. Oh, well, I'm glad you came to be with us. And so what, is, what does a, a Barnabas do? A, be friends. Yeah. He took and he brought. So now I am befriending her, talking with her, and I'm also being a tour guide. That's a good word. I'm a tour guide. She doesn't know where to go. Come back up, Maggie. Come back to your pew. She doesn't know where to go. She needs a, an official tour guide. She needs a Barnabas. So now I've showed her around. I've told her about the church and things like that. I've showed her. So not only am I showing her, here's my third point. And there's some other, other things I can show to her. I can show to her the pastor. I can take her to show the pastor. If a stranger walks in, there's no photo out front to say, this is our pastor. Praise the Lord for that. <laughs> we want people to come. <laughs> I lost that support. Amen. Oh. Can I tell you something? But most people don't know who the pastor is. Even if there is a picture, they don't know where he's at. But I can show her where the pastor's at. Being a lady, I want to show her pastor's wife and get them connected one way or another to get be friends. And if there's somebody that's similar to what she's doing, I want to do the same. I want to show her around. And so which brings my third point. So my first point, he took discipleship. He brought fellowship. Thirdly, he declared. He declared. The Bible here says in that, in that same verse, he brought them to the disciples and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way, how that he had spoken to him, and how that he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. You see, he declared unto now the disciples on her behalf. So Barnabas testifies for the visitor, declared to testify for him, comma, credibility credibility, dot, 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 kinship. So we've gone from discipleship to fellowship to now kinship. It's as if we are connected. We're kin, not so much like family. If I find out that she's saved or not, that, that helps even more. You're saved, brother, Lord, praise the Lord. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. But we're kin in that sense. Or we have now slowly developing a kindred spirit. A kindred, a same like spirit. So I'm meeting her, I'm showing her around, and I get to know her a little bit better. And go ahead and stand with me, Maggie. And so I'm showing, hey, that's somebody I want, I want to introduce. You like music? Let me introduce you to our piano player. Well, she loves to play. This is our piano player. Hey, this is my friend Maggie, and I just met her this morning, but she's, she's happy to see. Any other time, Maggie was up by herself. I'm not saying about your piano player. I'm just saying sometimes that's the case yeah. until somebody introduced. And then I want you to come over here. I'm coming to back. I want, I want you to meet. I want you, I want you to meet, meet. This is Michael. Hello. Michael's our usher. This is Michael. And I got Patrick, Patrick's wife. They're a sweet couple. Amen. Praise the Lord. And these kind folks back here, I know who you are. I don't remember your name. Amen. Don't get me in trouble. That shows that I'm not a member here, but I should know. Amen. This is our pastor and the pastor's wife. Amen. And so glad to have. And so this is Maggie. She's my new friend and all that. And so now what am I doing? As I am introducing Maggie, she has now become your friend. How did she become your friend? Because she's going around on my name. I'm giving her credibility to a point. So now when you look at her and she's like, she's a stranger. She's a stranger. But after I walk up and introduce, oh, that's Brother Holtzclaw's friend. It's a big difference. It's a big difference. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Maggie. The crazy one. 
So if you can, and, this, and, and when anybody walks in the back that's visitors, they're fair game to not only to, 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 to get to say hello to them and shake their hand, but also now lead them around. Tell them about your church. Tell them about your pastor. Introduce them to your pastor. Sure, introduce them to your friends. Introduce them to, to the church family. There's got to be somebody in this room that has something in common with that one person. You would think. But until then, be all thanks to all people. So you like to knit. I don't, I don't knit. <laughs> but I can say, that looks really neat. That looks really interesting. You're going to have to show me how to do that one day. And she's, I what I, just said knitting needles. Oh, I just said a knitting needle. She can teach me. I might, I might do that if I was really striving to become her friend. And so I'm making that connection. I'm showing her around. I'm giving her credibility. Can I tell you two things are happening? I pray two things are happening. One thing... Your comfort level is going back up again because you have a visitor that now you know who that is. It's not a gossip thing. This is not, well, I just need to know. No, this is something that we're trying to put the family together. And someone who walked in the back door just may be the newest member to our family. Amen. But we won't know until someone says, hello. Hello. And so now she's Brother Holtzclaw's friend. How long has Brother Holtzclaw known her? Five minutes. <laughs> Brother Holtzclaw's just that way. Well, we all ought to be that way. We all ought to be that way. And so now everybody knows. So she now has some credibility. Paul had no credibility. Paul had the credibility of being a killer. Of being one that took the Christians to kill them. But it took a Barnabas, a true Barnabas, the heart of a Barnabas, to even give Saul to the apostles and disciples. But not only that, for them to accept them. And they do. Because how did he get to this point? Because my next point is, not only did he took him, discipleship, brought him, fellowship, declared him kinship, but spoke to him. Spoke to him. And he said, I, and I spoke to him, and he shared with me these things. Meaning, to listen to him to listen to him dot 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 a relationship you know a relationship is not, cannot be one-ended one-sided it cannot only be one-sided you can't just come in and monopolize somebody and just say hey welcome to my church we're so glad hey let me show you the restrooms let me show you the bathroom let me show you where all this over here and show you the nursery and let me show you the piano player and let me show you the meet the pastor god bless you hey said glad you came sit down no, that's not that, that, that's silly, Brother Holtzclaw. I know, that's, but we do it. But we can do that. Well, the next thing is to get to know, is to chat with Maggie. Find out who she is. Find out, do you work, Maggie? What, what, do you like to travel? Do you, you know, how'd you get here? How'd you find out about the church? And you, can, and you get these answers too. Hey, that's wonderful. Hey, we found it on the internet. Chalk it up to the internet. Let's get more stuff going on, on the internet. We found it in the newspaper. Great, put it on the newspaper. Hey, I got a gospel track that I found that somebody left at the restaurant. I'm a waitress. Well, hallelujah. I want to keep putting out gospel tracks for the waitresses, whatever the case may be. But you won't know that until you take the time to really sit and to talk with them. I said, well, Brother Holesclaw, you know, by the time I, I get in and all that, it's time for the church to start. Okay. So come earlier. Just for the purpose of waiting for someone that may be your, just be your bestest friend in the whole wide world that you just haven't met yet. You may just walk in the door. But you came in late. But how about staying a little later after it's over and to talk? Stay a little later. So I can't come early because of this, that, and the other. Can you stay a little later? Well, I just can't because I'm too busy. Absolutely. You're just too busy to be a Barnabas. But my friend, all a Barnabas is is a servant. A servant that's given his heart and life to, to serve. But here's the last point that I have for you. It says here, and when, then, it says, it says when the brethren knew, verse number um, 30, when the brethren knew, that they that, that knew they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. Were multiplied. We'll give them that multiplied 
word next. But here they sent him. They brought him in, they listened, and then they turned it back around and gave Saul some instruction. They gave him some help. They partnered with them. A partnership is my last ship. A partnership. Later we find that Saul is, is up in Tarsus and Barnabas is now sent up to Antioch. And, and at Antioch, Saul, uh, Barnabas needs some help. Who does he call? Does he go down to the others down in Jerusalem? Hey, I need help. No, he calls up his disciple Lee. Amen? He calls his disciple up. Hey, Saul, can you come help me in Tarsus? And Saul comes down to help him in Tarsus. And Saul grows. He grows in the Lord. He's an active part in the ministry now. He's active in it. And then the Holy Spirit comes and says, separate unto me, Saul and Barnabas, for my work. And they go off into the mission field. They go off starting churches. They're the first sent missionaries out of the church. And the name instantly changes from Saul to Paul. And also in order, up until that point, it's Barnabas and Saul. But right, after their, right on during their first trip, the names flip. And now it's Paul and Barnabas. You know, when you do a study and you see names and listing of names, most all the time, the first name mentioned is the most prominent one. You look at the list of the disciples. Peter, James, John. Peter, James, John. Peter, the one that keeps putting his foot in his mouth, but he's always the leader. Peter, James, John. But it was Barnabas and Saul. But when the name changed, it became Peter, Paul, and Barnabas. You see, it took someone. It took someone to come and to work with them. It took someone to encourage one. It took one to partner with one. It took one to befriend one and to get to know one, to get them to the church, but not only get to the church, but to get them involved and get them acclimated and get them moving forward. For my friend, we need the church to be multiplied. We need the moving and the comfort of the Holy Spirit in church. Amen? I can rant and raise and fuss and fume about this thing and that thing and about gossip and about, about harming the members and how Christians, we Baptists, we kill our own wounded, my friend. And we're the only army, God's army, that kills our own wounded. We ought to be the comfort of the Holy Spirit of God. We ought to be the encouraging place. This ought to be the hospital where people can come to get patched up spiritually, to get patched up emotionally, to get patched up and get rid of the extra baggage for Jesus and come to that old-fashioned cross and to come to the old-fashioned altar and to lay it there. That's why we have an altar. That's why we have an altar. That's why we give people an opportunity to make a decision for the Lord. But it's one thing to make a decision from here. It's another to make it from here. And there's just something about moving from there to here. It could be all the difference from getting it from here to here. Well, that's a good idea. Oh, that's emotionally charging. Well, I really need to do something about it. And my friend, as soon as we have the invitation time, you come to an old-fashioned altar, you've already made, put your foot into practice of what God's already worked upon your heart to do. But if you don't let the feet move of what God's told you to do, then it takes some extra doing to get it moving again. Remember the old saying, strike while the iron's hot? And that's how it is when a visitor comes. A visitor walks in the door, they don't know what to expect. They're looking for a friendly church. They're looking for a happy church. They're looking for a church that loves each other and that someone would possibly love on them. Amen? Outside the preaching, outside the wonderful piano playing, I hope you come because your friends and brothers and sisters in Christ are here. And you come to see them. Well, let's help the family to grow a little bit. Let's help the family to grow a little bit. When someone comes in, God, God brought somebody in for us to, to get to know a little bit better. And let's don't, let's don't, you know, don't, don't next Sunday or even Wednesday when a visitor comes in, 14 people attack the person that walked in the door. <gasps> There's a visitor. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Visitor on premises. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Visitor on premises. Whoop, whoop. And everybody goes, whoop, 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 whoop. Hey, I want to show you. Hey, I want to teach you. Hey, and that visitor will go, I'm leaving this place. Do you see somebody already working with somebody? 
Just wait your turn. Wait your turn. Because they, they may only say hello and leave it there. And the person themselves may say, no, I'm not interested. I'm not interested about walking around. I'm not interested in meeting anybody. I'm not, honor that, please, honor that. Well, great, can I, can I sit beside you then? Can I sit by you then? If I can't show you around, I should love to tell you about my church. I should love to tell you about my pastor. I should love to tell you and answer any questions you may have about, about who we are. But I just want to let you know, we're just excited. We're just thrilled that you've come. And I personally would like to get to know you. Because see, let, let me give you a scenario. Here comes Maggie. She walks in. Nobody says hello. She made her way up to the front. That's an empty pew. I'll sit right here. She sits down. Nobody really notices. She's off in a corner by herself. Some sit in the back by themselves. Larger churches, it's going to be a little bit harder. But smaller churches, it's real easy to spot the visitors. Amen. We know each other. Oh, she's going to get in trouble. She's sitting in Miss Jones' seat. <laughs> Help a girl out, okay? Help a girl out and try to move her along to another seat before Miss Jones comes in, okay? Get the idea. But imagine Maggie comes in and she sits in, and, 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 I, and I've been there to where people have walked up to us sitting, and, and we're sitting in their pew. You're sitting in my pew. That has actually happened. That has actually happened to us. And I'm like, you're kidding me. No, this is, this is our pew. This is where we always sit. I mean, always. You know, we, we can't sit anywhere else. So we were like, okay, no problem. We'll be the bigger Christian. We'll be the bigger Christian and move. Instead of accepting the fact that, praise God, there's a visitor sitting in my pew, and I'm going to be the disciple to that one and sit with them. God gives. God bless someone in my pew. Yes! But if nobody did, Maggie came in. Nobody talked to her. Nobody shook her hand. She, she walks out the back door. Pastor catches her because pastor's standing there. But I know many a pastor that don't stand at the back door. They don't. And even if she gets back there first, pastor shakes his hand. Hey, glad you came today. She says, thank you. Walks out the door. Pastor's going to go, uh, okay. And somebody else grabs his hand. He's kind of stuck. And so she walks out the door. She comes in. She hears the music. She hears the preaching. Nobody says hello. Nobody shakes her hand. Nobody shows her around. She's just as lost as can be. She sits on the pew by herself. The sermon's over. She exits the building. If not, leaves early. Is she more or less likely to come back? Less likely. But if someone were to come to Maggie and take her hand and get to know her and talk to her a little bit, show her around a little bit, as long as they're willing to do that, find out who they are, find out where they're from, find out kind of maybe if you can even feel comfortable to go into a spiritual conversation with them at, at the beginning and say, hey, I'm glad you came, came this morning. Is there anything that I can pray for you about while you're here today? And she may say, oh, my mother. My mother, my Mimi. Mimi's got cancer. And I just... I had, a fight with, I had a fight with a friend of mine. <coughs> and I just have a bird, bird upon my heart. That can happen. Don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of that. But I'm saying that's going to happen. I'm saying it could happen. More so, they're going to come in. So I just, I just saw this. I saw that. And I thought I'd just come. I saw your sign up front. And I thought I'd just come in today. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Do you live in the area? Are you a local? Wonderful. Man, my name, let me introduce you to my family. Let me introduce you to my wife. And on the way, hey, this is Miss Owen. This is Miss Owen. So, hey, this is, hey, this is, you know, you show them around and you get them in. Wonderful. Hey, do, do you know anybody in the church? No. Instead of you sitting by yourself, would you sit with my family and I? Would that be okay? Why, sure. Or, or there's not enough room in the pew. I tell the kids to get out. <laughs> I say, kids, you sit in front of me. Miss Jones is sitting beside us today. And so if that happens, you get to know them, you're talking with them, maybe and get, 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 get my wife with her and talk to her and get her telephone number and try to follow up with her, make sure she fills out a visitor's card. We sing together in the service. Boy, she's a great alto. She loves to sing. Wow. I got to tell the choir director about this one. And, and so the service goes along. I'm watching the invitation happens. And I'm a, I'm a peeker when I have visitors. I'm a peeker. 
If you do not know for sure that if you die today you go to heaven, would you raise your hand? <laughs> you know, see that hand go up? I'm going to go, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. And then I'm going to reach over and I say, hey, I'm going down to the altar. Would you like to come with me? Nothing imposing. You didn't ask her if she died today, she'd go to heaven. Sometimes you may, you may say, hey, wouldn't you like to be saved today? And they may say, yeah. Is it easier to come by yourself? Is it easier to come down with somebody with you? And so she may come. She may get right. We may talk about what's burden upon her heart. We may pray that special prayer request. Hey, let's go, let's go forward. Let's pray about your mom. Let's go pray about your, your family. Let's go pray about your friend. Let's go. Come on. Come with pray with me. Okay. And you walk down and now you're, you're praying together at the altar. You're making a connection. She gets up. She leaves. Hey, Maggie, so thank you for coming. Introduce her back to pastor again. You see you walk her out to her car, and she gets in her car, and she leaves. Is she more likely to come back or less likely to come back? And we're missing that in our churches. Who would raise their hand? I mean, tonight, be honest. Who would raise your hand and say that you want to thank the Lord by raising of your hand to say that there has been, there's been a Barnabas in your life to help encourage you in your spiritual growth? Amen? There's always there's been somebody. Beyond, beyond the pastor. I mean, often it's the pastor. From the, oh, the pastor's encouraged. Well, I mean, somebody else. Like, for me, it was my dad. My dad was my encourager. You know, but, but encouragement is not just, doesn't just come to lead someone to Christ. An encourager also helps those which have been saved for a long time. We get to know each other. We get to know each other's countenance. You know when somebody's down. You know when somebody's having a bad day. You know when somebody's lost their arthritis cream in the piano. You can tell. And so instead of going up and saying, hey, what's going on? You walk up to them and say, hey, I'm praying for you today. I'm praying for you today. That's what brothers and sisters in Christ do. Sisters in Christ do. So, hey, let's become more like Barnabas. Let's become more like Barnabas. And don't just say hello and shake hands. Try to take another step. Try to involve them just a little bit into what you call your church home. So with our heads bowed and eyes closed tonight, all across the room, I pray that helped you. But I want to give you a thought. A thought. First of all, are you saved? Are you born again yourself? Number two, are you are you right with God? Are you right with God right now? Do you know for sure that if that God called you up to heaven, that you'd have that as clear record as you could have with God? If not, my friend, we need to get things right. That may be what's hindering you from being that Barnabas. You've got things that you need help with. My friend, tonight, I just want to be a help. I just want to be an encouragement. Why not tonight? Come and lay that burden on the altar. Why not tonight cast every care upon him, for he careth for you? Let us be a Barnabas to you tonight and to each other. Maybe tonight, sister, you know of another sister that's hurting tonight. Why don't you go to her and pray for her? Brother, you know of another brother that's hurting tonight. Why don't you step out and go pray for them tonight? And let's keep our eyes open. Let's keep our ears open. And let's all strive to be a Barnabas to each other, but also a comfort and a help to those which come fresh and new. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We praise you. Pray that you lead us tonight. I pray, Lord, you guide us. Help us, dear Lord, tonight to dedicate our hearts to be more like a Barnabas for thee. Lead us, dear Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Pastor? Yeah. Maybe you used to be a Barnabas, you used to be a helper, you used to encourage, and something stopped you. Why not just tonight come to the altar? If you can't kneel, the front pew, sit, and just rededicate yourself to be a Barnabas, to be someone who cares and encourages. Janice is going to play. If you need to come, you come quickly.
Somebody was your Barnabas. Somebody helped you. Somebody encouraged you. 